the 205 block we've had with the drop liners, we have found the issue. Good afternoon, guys, and welcome back to the channel. So, just a quick update. Um, obviously, Monday afternoon now, just a little update as to what we've done today. I had another exhaust manifold which I faced today. That was a nice, um, slow job. We've got several jobs come in. Well, actually, loads of jobs, about 10 jobs come in today, just what we needed. Um, I've got the, so we've got the boat engines over here. The two boat engines, they're all pretty much done. We're just waiting for injectors. One problem we've got here, we've got the, we sent the injectors away to be serviced and they can only find four Bosch nozzles to be able to make four decent injectors. So we've still got to find another eight injectors for these two engines. Um, we're up against it with these because these have got to be back in the boat by beginning of March um, to have the 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 sort of deck fiber glassed over. Um, so we're on a mad panic trying to find injectors for that, but everything's on back order. It's a nightmare. Um, we've let the customer know, but we're in mad search um, for injectors on that. Um, I've had a little Lotus block. So this is a 711M basically, 1600. Um, I've had to reface that and rebore it, plus 30, that one's gone. So he's all done, give him a clean in the morning. Update on the Mini. So here's the Mini. We've had Bob in today and he's put the, he's reassembled the clutch. Uh, we put the new arm on, as you can see, and done a few fine adjustments and we've got a proper pedal now. Jobs are good. Um, he's just got a few little bits to finish off tomorrow and then we're going to give that a test drive, but hopefully that has solved our problem there with the Mini clutch. Right. You recognize this? This is the 205 block we've had with the drop liners. Done a video on that last week. We have found the issue. Uh, so we've managed, the, managed to, first of all, we press the liners out. So I said last in the last video, we've made a dolly to go in the back. Unfortunately, whoever it was who did the machining before, they didn't um, 648 Loctite them liners in, else they wouldn't have budged. I'd have had to machine them out. We've pushed them out and we've cleaned up the liners. On first inspection, the, all the honing looks pretty good in there. It doesn't look like there's any sort of areas that haven't been contacting on the side of the liner, if you know what I mean. So they haven't been flapping about. I've measured them and we've got about two, two and a half thou interference on there, which I'd say is good. That's absolutely fine. No issue at all. Uh, the number one liner with the bigger diameter flange than the, the other three that's still a mystery um, the actual base of the liner measures the same as the other the other three which is good but the the liner the, the flange diameter on this one is wider so that's a mystery not sure what's happened there whether they've had a bit of a boo-boo on on the um the flange diameter and had to order another liner i don't know but um now it was as i say it was puzzling me why these liners had dropped and i did say to you before it may be that the they hadn't put a chamfer on the inside here um to sort of give you clearance on the radius inside that liner flange but that seems to be okay and what i did find whether this 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 is either one of two reasons either one they didn't realize and they've just pushed the liners in or two they sort of did realize and thought they'd get away with it by pushing the liners flush with the block face facing it and hoping to god nothing happened which it did uh so what i found is the flange depth from the surface of the block down to this step on the liner is 160 thou and in the block it's 190 thou so we're 30 thou out there basically they've machined this depth 30 thou deeper than the actual flange depth in the liner and i suspect what they've done is they've just pushed the liners flush to the block face but the trouble is with that you see you've still got 30 thou gap underneath this this liner face um so when i said to the customer 
you've got two options. One, we can try and get these out and put our own liners in, or two, you can assume that they are they have the liners have sank down to the actual face here, and you face it, and they're not going to move again. Now, I'm glad that we never chose that option because all that would have happened, because the line has only pushed down about five thou, you've got a still another 25 thou from to go. So all that's going to have happened is you face this and they're just going to push down again as soon as you clamp the bloody gasket down or the head down. So really glad we didn't take that option. Uh, we've got these out. Now, fortunately, compared to the ductile iron liners that I use, We've still got plenty of meat to take out for the flange diameter, and we've got 20 thou in this diameter to take out to put ours in. So I'm going to set this up tomorrow. I'm going to bore it another 20 thou, and obviously do the flange diameters. And then we've I've ordered another set of liners, and we're going to pop them liners in there. Um, we've got actually on our liners the the depth of the flange is 200,000 so that's absolutely perfect not going to have to go any deeper here and hopefully once we push them in they're going to protrude about another 10,000 ideal for facing yeah we've got a few marks on here um, but that'll all be clean by the time we face it and we've got to mod the piston crowns anyway and um, the pistons look nearly new so, and he wants to reuse them so we're going to go for a set of rings um, obviously bore each bore to suit on the pistons and um, jobs are good and on that unfortunately it's going to obviously cost him like <laughs> another load of bits another load of labor building it and probably about a grand with the machining and the liners to do the liner job but I said to him really I suggest you get back although it was he, he reckons it was two years ago he had it done um, get back to the the people that did this and see what they say. I would have thought the decent thing for them to do is sort of help him out a little on something, um, but you know what it's like. Right, so this Cosworth here, we've done for a, one of our customers. Now this is the Cosworth that we've built up from having nothing as a donor whatsoever. So when this customer rang, he initially rang, wanted a Cosworth done. He wanted it to put in his Mark One Escort, which was, I think it was an ex-rally car, you know, caged up and all that. Um, but he wanted to put a Cosworth turbo in it. He was on about buying a donor two-wheel drive engine to do. Um, and I, th you know what it's like with the prices these days. It had rocketed up. And whereas a few years ago, you could get a, a sort of half-decent donor for about two and a half, three grand. This engine he was talking about was sort of six and a half thousand quid. And I said... You know, if you're going to be wanting to run the power you want to run, first of all, you need a 200 block, so the block's no good. And then you're assuming that the two-wheel drive head's any good to use, um, and also with the crank and what have you. And it was only a tall engine. It had none of the ancillaries on it or anything. So we decided to just do away with a donor engine and just build one from scrap. Uh, sorry, from scratch. Um, and just build one from scratch. So what we've got here... He's asked me to do a video, one, so we sort of, I can show you the spec of the engine and show you what we've done and, and, and also to just show you what we need internally and externally to run the sort of power he wants to run. So, first of all, if we start off with the block, we've got a 200 block there running six long studs, Julian Godfrey studs, um, which I did. We've got... Wozner pistons in there, obviously with the tops modified. We're going to be running about um, eight to one compression ratio on this. We've got the PEC H section con rods in there, obviously motorsport bearings, got a fully balanced crank assembly. The crank is ground to 0.25 on the mains and the big ends just to make sure it's straight and clean and, and ready to go. We're running half mil oversize on the bores. We've got a very mildly ported cylinder head. It's only been taken out about another millimeter, but we've got it sort of matched to the manifolds. As you can see, the inlet manifold's been gone through there. We're running standard camshafts, inlet and exhaust. And as you can see, standard pulleys as well there, just been, um, just been plated. This engine here, we're hoping is gonna be around the 420, 430 horsepower mark and same sort of torque. We always seem to be able to get decent torque out of our engines at around that power so 
hopefully that's what we're, we're looking for and what it's going to be. We've got a four-wheel drive exhaust manifold, which I supplied out in stock. Um, so that's been refaced and painted, what have you. We've got a genuine two-wheel drive alternator with the, the Burton sort of aftermarket bracket and an aftermarket aluminium lightweight bracket down there. Yeah, we've got motorsport leads, motorsport plugs. What have we got here? We've got the a T34, what started life as, obviously with the, the billet front wheel in there and machined out. And we've also got a bit of a special wheel in the back and had the housing at the back machined out. So we sort of almost T38-ish. Um, so this should get us about another sort of 10 horsepower on top of a uh, 0.63 T34 that we usually get. They're getting a bit scarce now, so this is the, the new thing that we do. Yeah, so he's took it away, the customer, we've and he's painted the rocker cover, and we've machined that. It's, a, it's one of our, what I call, sort of standard builds, really. Always do the bottom end with the valve pockets and the motorsport bearings and all fully balanced. You know, even, even though we get the... Even when we get the PEC rods and the Wozner pistons, we still balance them all and make sure it's absolutely cock on. Um, I did supply a flywheel that's very slightly lightened with a six paddle AP kit in there on the clutch. As you can see, we've got a G63 gearbox here, which was out of, I think he said it was out of his friend's Janetta, this thing, hardly done any work whatsoever. Um, now you can tell by the way it's sitting on the crane here, it's a bit Eth Robinson. But all I wanted to do was just check that it all sort of mates on. And you can see we've got a gap now. Um, that gap there is about eight, getting on 10 mil. But what we've done, Burton do a specific plate that sits in between this. This is just a Pinto bell housing. Um, this plate, it's a 16 mil plate, sits in between the Type 9 fitment, which this is, and the bell housing. And that will give us the correct clearance there for that. So we've got that coming. And we've also got a genuine oil filler cap. And, and that's it then. He's going to take that away and sort of do his own work. I'm going to leave it to them to decide if they want to run any water cooling in this turbo. If they do, I'll let them sort out their own banjos and fitments and what have you there. And the same on the oil pressure um, T-piece there. See what they want to run on that. Got a standard size throttle body. Um, but that's about it. That's as far as we're going, really. I'm going to leave it up to him to decide what injectors he's going to run and fuel rail, and he can do that once they, they sort of got to the point. I think he's going to be running an Omex system on this. So, as you can see by the front, we've got no front pulley on there. So what he'll probably end up doing is putting a, a twin V-belt, a bit like that alternator there, and a twin V-belt pulley on the water pump and on the bottom pulley with the, the 36 minus one trigger wheel on the back, but um, we're gonna leave that to them. Um, so yeah, this engine's done. It's been a, a long sort of project or an ongoing project, this absolute nightmare to, to build from scratch now, these things, because second hand, you know what it's like, second hand market, all these bits are fetch, fetching astronomical money. Um, and that's if you can get them. And brand new, you've got places like Burton, which are a godsend, but then they list stuff as, as um, in stock, but then you come to order it and it's back order. So yeah, bit of a nightmare, um, but it's, it's all pretty much there now. And he's coming to collect this Wednesday. So really happy with that and can't wait to see what it goes like in the car. I think he's pretty excited himself. But that's it for today, guys. I'm gonna do another video tomorrow. That's what we've got going on at the moment. Thanks ever so much for watching. And um, if I don't see you before, see you in another video. Like, subscribe, comment down below. Take care, guys. Cheers.